your yes. your health, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional fitness, right? Uh -huh. Of course, the people around you, um, your relationship with your with your finances, your uh, relationship with you know just your career, um, just life in general. Everything you can think of is about how you relate to it. Yes. So as a personal performance coach, everything that somebody, pretty much anything that somebody comes to me with, you know, and then I'm talking about people that are fairly emotionally stable people. I'm not talking about the exception oh, to the yeah. rule, people that need, you know, serious psychiatric help yes. or, you know, whatever. Um, but generally speaking, people that are just feeling stuck or challenged or, you know, just really need um, some perspective and some help with goals or navigating some challenges. For those people, it's all about, you know, okay, what is going on in the main aspects of your life? And that's going to be um, how are you feeling emotionally? How are you feeling physically? How's your health? How's you? Do you have a any kind of a spiritual connection? Something yes. that you lean into? So how are you basically performing personally in all of the important areas of your life? And we kind of end up looking at each one of them, no matter what the initial issue is, because they're all connected <laughs> and they all affect each other. Yes. Yes, uh, you hit that right on the head. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> we have got a great guest with us today. Lori Bischoff joins us today. She's a personal development coach, which, by the way, that, that, that uh, as they say in the wrestling business, that promo you just cut there on the, uh, the fact of a, what is a personal development coach is the best thing I've ever heard. Uh, you're a holistic health coach. You also are the host of, and I love this, We're Talking Shift. It's a uh, tremendous podcast. You also have a great book, Common Sense Happiness, and uh, the website, of course, lauriebischoff.com. Uh, let's start with the holistic uh, health coach. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me a little bit about the whole world of holistic health. I noticed that probably the last, I don't know, five, six years, more people are getting into the whole holistic uh, medicine and, and finding alternative ways to fix their health other than going and getting all the you know, pharmaceuticals and all the nonsense. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that's been a passion of mine really since um, started in, really started in my teenage years. My, my mother kind of got us started thinking a little bit about being uh eating healthier and yes. so that would have been like 70s then rolled around the 80s which is when uh we had our children yeah. and then i really got into it because i thought well i have now you know i'm responsible for two humans and <laughs> so what 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 are my um priorities and responsibilities as far as bringing them up in the very best way i possibly can yes and the most obvious part of that is what am what am i feeding them so i just dove into health and food and holistic health even even back then before it was trendy yeah. um i was i was just <laughs> educating myself about it so um then you know it just seemed like a natural part of of coaching because really if a, if a person comes to you and they say you know or to me uh i am really struggling with my relationship yeah. uh, with my spouse right now yeah. and we're on the brink of a divorce but blah 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 um or i'm going through a divorce yeah Okay, we can we can work through all of that. However, if your health and the and what you're eating is sabotaging you so that you don't feel yes. well, you don't feel motivated, you 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 know, you're waking up with sugar hangovers or other uh -huh. hangovers or you know, if you're not giving yourself the things that you need physically to be able to rise to the challenge and clearly think through your options and your choices and what you want to do, um, then you're just really sabotaging yourself. So, yes. you know, so that's how it fits into, it fits into my business that way because everyone should be concerned with their health. To me, you know, your emotional health and your physical health is pretty much like, if you don't have that, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, nothing's going to be good, right? You could win the lottery and if you don't have your mental and emotional health and your physical health in line, what really, how, 
you're not you're not going to be that happy even if you win lottery money you, <laughs> your consciousness isn't going to yes. allow you to be happy and that's actually a those are actually true statistics it's a i believe i forget the number it's around 70 six percent or something like that yes. of people that have won large sums of money won lottery tickets and that 70 something percentile reports later on that they are more miserable than be they've lost yes. it all number one they can't they don't maintain oh yeah it. and they're, yeah it's all and gone <laughs> and they're worse off than they were before so that's what I mean. It's just like one area of your life affects the other. So if you don't get your mental and emotional fitness and your physical yeah. fitness all up to speed, um, you know, to support your own growth and evolution yeah. as a person, you, you just kind of keep, you know, swimming around in circles. We have got a tremendous guest with us today. She joins us live here on Skype video. Lori Bischoff is with us. Uh, check out LoriBischoff.com for more information. Now, with you being in uh, Wyoming, is there a big trend for uh, healthy living and healthy eating and everything? Since essentially, you know, everyone in Wyoming is spread out. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> I uh uh, we are in the least populated state in America. <laughs> so we, social distancing is a way of life here. <laughs> you don't even have to try. <laughs> so that's easy. Um, so, you know, I think that there's always going to be pockets of, of people that are going to be, um, you know, really into doing what they can for their own personal health and wellness yes. and well-being. But I think that, you know, overall, you know, if you compared it to, say, California, where it's, yeah. you know, avocados and, and chia seeds all day, um, <laughs> no, it probably doesn't compare. The, the the percentage of people here are probably not that health-oriented compared to that. But yeah. But overall, you know, there's some other things that factor in. There's a lot of other ways that people are healthy here because it's much more of a – there's a lot of um, – it's a lifestyle that's just different. You know, you're, there's a lot that's of, cool. it's very hardy. It's, it's a very, you, you have to be somewhat hardy to, to live in a climate like this where it's, uh, it's a lot of wind. Um, yes. you know, we have seasons and the sea, you know, winter and spring can be pretty harsh and long. Um, so, you know, people are very <laughs> hardy and healthy, but maybe in a different way. That's pretty cool. I'm, yeah. I'm 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 glad that uh, you know you're you're not the the only one out there doing uh, healthy living. I'm glad that yeah. everyone is kind of kind of picked up the as you said earlier kind of before it was trendy. Uh, so tell us about the website LoriBischoff.com. You've got all sorts of things going on over there. Yeah, I like to. Uh, I you know I mean I'm. I like to put out all of the things that I am passionate about and, and the things that I'm interested in share that. Yeah. So obviously, you know, coaching, I love that. I've been doing that for 12 years now. Um, so, you know, if you want to find out about that and coaching with me, all of that information is on there. Um, I love um, the podcast. Uh, that has yes, been going gonna... really well and growing nicely. Thank you. So that is all about, um, you know, it's, it's, we're talking shift and, it's all about really, you know, things of value for people in all different arenas. I, I like to bring on um, guests that are, you know, teachers or experts or professionals, people that are using their expertise and their experiences yeah. to bring value to other people. That's awesome. Um, so yes. wh wh why, why did so you decide to, to put the podcast together? Was, was that just the next step after writing a book or was it you know maybe you had some audio equipment laying around and you're like you know we might as well put this to use <laughs> well well you know we have audio equipment laying around yes my, my husband's been podcasting now for a while uh so so that's there so that was kind of easy it's not like yeah. i had to go out and um you know invest in a bunch of equipment but yeah. really uh, you know it was kind of encouraged by my husband by eric a couple of years ago, he started saying, you know, you need to do a podcast. Um, you should be reaching a larger audience with yes. your messages. Yes. And 
And I thought about it for a while. And honestly, I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, the same old fear about something that um, you are unfamiliar with. I'm like, yes. I don't know. What do I have to, who's going to want to listen to me? You know, so uh, yeah. it took me a little while. But, but actually, when I started it, um, I started it with a co-host. Um, oh. And yeah, so the first few episodes, if you go back very uh one through 12, I think, back to the very beginning. Um, I have a co-host, uh, a uh, super cool, super cool woman. Uh, her name is Candace Parisi, and she is a, uh, she's a psychic. She is an wow. amazing intuitive. And uh, we met um, a few years ago, and um, we were in a group scenario, and she, she didn't know me, and she looked at me, and she goes, you, you need to be on the radio or you need to be doing something you need to be like some sort of radio thing and i was like well that's interesting because i had been talking about and yeah. thinking about the idea for a while so cut to about um maybe a year later uh we started talking about doing it together so uh wow. the first few episodes are candace and i and then um you know she decided it wasn't exactly her cup of tea so she was yeah. gonna continue doing her own thing and i said well Cool, no harm, no foul. I'll just, you know, the train left the station. I'm going now. So I just, That's right. I just kept moving forward with it, and here we are, you know, 80 episodes later. So who, who have been some of the more interesting folks and different topics that you've had on the show? Because I've listened to a, a good portion of these before we, we got you on here. Uh, who, who, talk, us, talk us through some of this. Okay. Well, for the um, part of your audience that, I don't know, might be wrestling fans, yeah. uh, I, I have, uh, I talked to Medusa uh, That's awesome. a while back, and that was really fun. She's, you know, pretty amazing, uh, yeah. an impressive woman. Um, a couple months ago, I talked with Diamond Dallas Page. Yes. And that was And, fun. and I've interviewed him before, and he'll talk your ear off. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's easy with Paige. All you got to do is say hello and yeah. sit back and relax until it's time to say goodbye. Yeah, so yeah, you just yeah. You, you do the introduction, and then at the end of it, you're like, well, we're up against the clock. We're out of time. Thanks for being on. <laughs> yeah, he's on. Awesome. But those are some, uh, some wrestling-related. Um, I think, um, uh, let's see, I loved interviewing um, – uh, Kelly Noonan, who uh, was awesome. the um, producer of the documentary called Heal, which, yep. you know, to me, and that's all about about health and wellness. Yep. And that's a big passion of mine. So that was a really great uh, interview um, for me. Um, Tim Ryan. Uh, wow. The, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Tim Ryan, but he is um, A&E, uh, did a special yeah. on him a couple of years ago uh, from Dope to Hope, the Dope yep. Man. Um you know he's a he's a huge force in um, in the country talking about you know re helping with recovery and yeah. recovering um, addicts. Uh, also, also Jennifer Jimenez, the same thing. She's a former wow. actress, um, professional model. Yeah. Um, she did all kinds of movies. And n at the time um, that I spoke with both of them, separate times, but. Um, since then, they've married, so they are now wow. like this amazing. They are this amazing, beautiful couple doing wonderful things in the country in that in that arena. Uh, that was very cool. So uh, I've got um, I've got one coming up that I'm very excited next week with um, Todd White, who is the founder of Dry Farm Wines. That I'm wow. very excited about. This is the, the the most amazing, cleanest, purest wine I believe on the planet. So that's going to be really fun. That's coming out next week. Now, since since you're since you've had him on the show and 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 you're the host and you're in you know essentially in the in the radio business at this point, did he send you some wine? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Because, because we're actually scheduled to talk on Monday, so yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> it's going to be so amazing. He's going to be like, I am so grateful to you, Lori Bischoff. I'm sending you a case. See, of that's always how it works. The girl can help, right? <laughs> We have got a tremendous guest with us today. We're having a lot of fun with Lori Bischoff. Uh, you can find her at lauribischoff.com. And you've written a, uh, several books, but uh, the one I want to talk about, Common Sense Happiness. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this book. What, tell me, take me through the writing process for this book. 
Well, the writing process started, um, I'd say about 2008, uh, wow. 2009. And, yeah. uh, but I just, uh, I just, you know, there wasn't really a strategy other than it was, it became something that I decided I just needed to do for myself. Yes. I, and I needed to do it because I thought I was feeling very, very fortunate and grateful. I've had a really uh, great life. It doesn't mean that yep. I haven't had my own challenges and, and that oh, tragedy yeah. hasn't fallen, you know, members of my family too, yeah. just like everyone else. But, but I was thinking really deeply about it one day and I thought, you know, why there have been a lot of people that have had um, the same things occur in their lives and they're just so unhappy and so miserable. And it's just, um, it's, it saddens me to see so many people in pain when you don't have yes. to be. And so I thought, you know, what are the, what are just some simple, a few simple um, techniques or a few simple principles, I call them the five life amazing principles that I know um, have worked for me in order to make me feel like I'm in a state of happiness Yes. Even even when you know even when you're navigating some challenges and it doesn't mean that you're you know giddy and happy all the time it doesn't mean that <laughs> it just means that but your overall state of being is one of happiness and then yes. you navigate all of the feelings that everybody is bound to have within that state does yes. that make sense oh yeah yeah so I just wanted to share that and I figured I would write the book and. Who knows what will happen with it? Maybe the worst or maybe the best thing that'll happen is, you know, every every member of my family will get a copy and maybe that's all that'll ever happen. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> going to do it. I'm going to put it out there and we'll see. So that was 2011 and wow, I can't believe it's like nine years later. So uh, what were some of your goals for the book? The goal was a to actually just write a book and to finish it okay. from start to finish. <laughs> That's Number good. one was just to do it. Because, I mean, how many times do we have goals and ideas and, oh, yeah. you know, we, they just... we entertain them, but yeah. do we ever actually take action and complete and finish it, right? Yeah. So part of it was, all right, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish it. So that was goal number one. Okay. But the um, the intention then beyond the goal, the personal goal of just writing and finishing and publishing it was the intention was to be able to, um, you know, give people maybe some principles that would help them um, you know, just be more content and find some more peace and joy in their yes. lives. And so the intention was whoever reads this hopefully comes away feeling a little bit more um, <laughs> hopeful uh, and and better equipped to design the life that they want. So um, if you had to do it over again, is there anything you would include or not include with, mm -hmm. the, with the whole mm -hmm. book? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and if I think about that, it drives me nuts. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you know, it, because now it's nine years later, right? So yes. as every as every day, week, month, year goes by, I keep learning and growing and learning and growing and learning and growing. Which means now I go back and I look and I'm like, oh, I should have added this. I should have said that. I should have, <laughs> you know, I could, I maybe I need to do a, you know, common sense happiness you know, part do, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's but, awesome. You know, I, and then I think, could I, maybe I just need to leave it rest. And if I feel the urge to put the new things that I've learned as I've grown into yeah. a new book, rather than trying to go back and tweak the old one. And, and I have a feeling a lot of people go through that, Oh yeah. you know, because, you know, if you're a person that's growing and evolving, you're bound to look back on your, you know, initial works and go, oh, I could do it better now. I could add, you know, it's, yeah. you always feel like it's not quite as good as it could be. So at some point, you just have to be like, it's fine. It's fine. It's and fine. if there's new information, it's just fine. <laughs> just just walk away, move on. And don't worry about it. We have got a tremendous guest with us today. Lori Bischoff joins us here on Skype. And uh, you have done a little bit of everything. Uh, you've hosted a podcast. You've wrote a book. You've got, a, uh, you've got a, uh, uh, an e-book, a cooking book that, that you've written. Uh, yeah. Is there anything you haven't done? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, there is. I have yet to zip line. It's on my... Oh, my God. <laughs> I really want to try that because it scares the crap out of me. Uh, so I've got to do that. But no, um, in the cooking book, it's actually, um, I call it, it's it's called the food print plan. Yes. Um, and it's less, there are some recipes in there, but it's really what it is, is a blueprint and a guide to help people create a healthy eating lifestyle. Awesome. So there are... There are exercises, you know, coaching exercises, tools yes. in there that I use with my clients because dialing in your health and wellness, uh, specifically your eating lifestyle, is yes. um, it's not just behavioral, it's it's mental too. So there's some shifts that have to happen up here. Yes. All the shifts have to start in your thinking. So you have to get your thinking in the right place before you embark on any kind of a dietary change. Otherwise, you are doomed to failure. You'll always co go back around to your habituated ways. Okay, so this this brings up a, an, an, an interesting question here as far as you, as far as the, the, the food and the eating. Um, when you and when you and your husband were living in, uh, I think it was Stanford, when he worked for SmackDown for the amount of time. A minute. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, did did your did you do a lot of cooking at home, or was it all takeout the entire time? And if it was takeout, how did you adjust everything when you moved back? Yeah. So when we when we got to Stanford, I'll tell you what it was. Um, it was a lot of fun in as far as the, the eating goes because uh, we're big foodies. We like good food. Yeah. Um, we cook a lot at home mainly. Now, I'd say especially now, 99.9% uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> of our eating is cooking at home. But even before we went to Stanford, in Cody, Wyoming, we don't have the variety of stores yeah. and products and restaurants that you do in a larger oh, city, yeah. obviously. So, um, so we pretty much, and and being a, a health, pretty much a health fanatic, if you will, yeah. um, not extreme, but primarily, well, yeah. you know, it's it's all about health. Um, so uh, it's it's not easy to do that eating out. Um, so most of it's done at home. But when we got to Stanford, we do enjoy. We love eating out. We love restaurants. Yeah. So when we got to Stanford, it was like, you know, you let us loose kids in a candy store because <laughs> now here we are. Now here we were in the city where we were in walking distance of pretty much anything that you could yeah. possibly want. Um, so we found our few great, our few favorite places that were great yeah. restaurants near us within a block or two or three away. And we had a blast for probably the first couple of weeks we just were eating out. Yeah. But still, we don't, we're not junk food eaters. I'm yeah. not a fast food eater. Uh, I, I just don't, I just don't like it. And I don't like yeah. the way it makes me feel very greedy about the way I feel. Yes. When, when you're, when you're a person that wants to be um, feeling optimally and you're willing to be very greedy about it, you're less willing to compromise and eat shit that you know is going to make you feel like <laughs> shit. It yes. just, you know, not going to do it. I just, it's not worth it. So, so there really uh, wasn't enjoyed. much of an adjustment from going there the, the, to coming back. The, yeah, the only adjustment was um, uh, the only adjustment was we did enjoy eating out more frequently. Yeah. But after we kind of got like some of it out of our system, and then I started, you know, we started cooking a little bit more. I did. Yeah. Eric was working a lot, so I yeah. did most of the cooking. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah. So then when we came back, it was really not. I'm very. Um, I have very specific things that are non-negotiable that I do. <laughs> six days a week. Yeah. And That's that great. is, you know, there's a certain kind of coffee and there's a certain way we have it every morning. There yeah. are, you know, there are protein health smoothies every morning. Yeah. There are salads, you know, raw food every evening. Yeah. There are just certain things that don't change except maybe on Saturday or maybe on Sunday and we might do something fun or have a brunch yeah. or, you know, whatever. But um, for the most part, about six days a week, it's it's pretty much the same thing, and they're non-negotiable. And that way, you know, when we do decide to have you know a, um, a champagne brunch on Sunday or or do something different that yeah. we didn't wouldn't normally do, like go out for pizza, it's no big deal because it's the exception to the rule. Awesome, awesome. Well, see, I I wondered how the how that you know changed, yeah. and then if you had to get 
on on back on track and how hard that was, but uh, you kept everything now, pretty disciplined. Easy That's pretty cool. Easy peasy. And and I, honestly, when we left Stanford, we didn't come right back to Wyoming. Um, we left there about a week or two before Thanksgiving in November. Yeah. And we didn't get back to Minnesota until um, the end of February because we went down to Florida. Oh. And there was no rush to get back to Wyoming in the winter. <laughs> in the so, winter, no. <laughs> yeah. So we said, let's let's just let's head south. Let's pack up our dogs and all our shit and head south and go to and go to Florida. Our son and his wife yeah. uh, live in Clearwater, and you know we have some friends there. So we went down there and hung out um, for a few months um, until about February, I believe, and then we drove up to made a pit stop in Minnesota for about yeah. another I don't know. I lost track of time now. Who who knows what time it oh, is yeah. these days? Yeah. The days have all gone together, but we stayed up there. We have family there. We're from there. I was born and raised there. So we, we hung out there for another four or six weeks and visited family. And then we eventually made our way back to Cody, Wyoming. So awesome. we've really only been here for a couple of months now. Wow. So uh, I guess before we let you go, because I know you, you've got a, a busy Friday, uh, I appreciate you taking as much time as you did today to uh, to chat with us, and we're definitely gonna have to do this again. That uh, this was a hell of a fun time. Uh, run it down for us. How do we get the books? Uh, listen to the podcast. Everything. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, everything, of course, is on lauriebischoff.com, and Laurie is L O R E E bischoff.com uh the podcast is we're talking shift and that's <laughs> Which is iTunes, a great google. title by the way <laughs> we're talking shift um yes itunes google and um spotify yes uh yep so uh the book uh common sense happiness is available on amazon and um, the the food print plan is a download, so you can it's an ebook. You can go right to my website, and you can buy it right there and have an instant download and start wow. uh, creating your healthy eating lifestyle just like that. Awesome. Do you have um, yeah audio books of either one of these books? Yeah, actually, um, I have not on the food print plan yet, and that's really one that I think would be hard. Yeah, because there's tools and things you can do yeah. um, on that, you know, but um, but common sense happiness is audio and that is on. Um, I'm mm, assuming audible in those places. I don't think it's audible, but it is on. Um, God, I just looked at this the other day, too, because I hadn't looked at it in ages. It's on Barnes and Noble and it's on. Is it E? Uh, uh, you got. Oh, there. yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know it either, but <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about there. Yes. If somebody wants it badly enough, uh, go to my website, contact me, and I will send you links. Fantastic. Well, uh, well, Lori, yeah. this has been a pleasure. I would love to do this again uh, here, here in a couple months. Sure. And uh, thanks for joining us today. This has been fun. Absolutely. It's my pleasure, James. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. There she goes, Lori Bischoff. And uh, you can get more information. Also, Lori B. Life Coach, if you want to find her on the old Twitter machine, as they say. And uh, we are going to take a brief time out. And when we come back.